Okay, boys and girls, Den here, JDOD. Hello, sports fans. I'm with Frank Scavo. Frank, Frank Scavo. Right. Um, we've been at M4 for a couple of days. We have. And they have some interesting things in and around the cloud. So tell me what you think. Very good. Well, uh, you know, one of my uh, strong interests is, uh, is in cloud computing, and I've just done this cloud ERP report, right. which uh, I spent a lot of time uh, interviewing the vendors, um, not only uh, in for, but a number of others. So mm -hmm. when I came here to this conference, I was very interested to hear what kind of updates uh, you know, they had in terms of their cloud strategy. Sure. So uh, last night I did get an update, and um, you know, they're moving very well um, in terms of uh, where they're going with the cloud, but you know, Infor is in the position that many other uh, traditional vendors are in because they have uh, you know, a large install base, and they have a large on-premise, um, uh, custom, many customers are on-premise with their ERP solutions, and um, you know, they're facing competition from the new guys like NetSuite and even SAP with their by design uh, offerings. So, right. so Infor you know, needs um, you know, a cloud ERP uh, solution, which they have introduced in the form of their Sightline offering, which is now offered as a true cloud ERP offering. It's not just hosted, but they actually have it running uh, in a multi-tenant environment um, with a shared infrastructure. Uh, and that's, uh, that's good from that standpoint. Uh, then in addition, with their customers, they have uh, you know, many of them that are looking for complementary systems like expense management, mm. uh, asset management, uh, CRM, mm. uh, HR, um, hospitality, and, and some others. So um, they're offering uh, these solutions also uh, as cloud-based um, uh, solutions. Mm. Again, more than hosted. Yeah. These are true cloud uh, solutions. Um, and they've put up some pretty impressive numbers. So okay. if I recall the numbers uh, correctly, they've got uh, uh, 1,200 uh, customers yeah. uh, using the cloud solutions. Again, not the hosted offerings, because they also offer hosted uh, solutions. Sure. Um, and I think the number is 2.4 million uh, users mm. uh, on those systems. So it's a pretty significant um, you know, uh, demographic there in terms of how many they actually have on. And I think in, they've made good progress. In, in terms of the numbers, I mean, it's, it's an untold story in many ways, isn't it? So, I mean, it was a big surprise to me to hear that. Uh, it is. It is a, an untold story because you hear about NetSuite and some of the other uh, guys that are cloud-only providers. Sure. And we know of them as, as cloud providers, but you don't think of, of Infor as a, cloud, as a cloud provider, but they do have a significant number of, uh, of installs, and I think it's very impressive. Do you think that... Um, going forward with their kind of installed base that the strategy is right mixing cloud with legacy I mean my view is it it, it has some significant merit for for those customers at least we've spoken with they almost don't have a choice right um, because if you're an Infor customer to this point you've been running on-premise systems mm. so your interest in the cloud is uh, you know is not an all-or-nothing proposition you're looking at mm. uh, in some way some type of hybrid deployment so mm. Uh, and Infor is not unique in this situation. They have, um, you know, any, any vendor that has a large on-premise install base faces this issue. How do you transition customers uh, to the cloud? How do you satisfy their, their need for um, a cost-effective, uh, easy-to-deploy, flexible solution um, while at the same time supporting their on-premise deployment? So, you know, all the vendors in this situation have to have some type of hybrid strategy. And sure. I think... Uh, the thing that, that many of us don't appreciate, um, but you do pick this up when you talk to the Infor executives in charge of cloud, is they do understand the benefits of cloud. Right. Uh, it's not just cloud washing. I mean, yeah. they, you know, they gave me some very, very interesting um, cost uh, comparisons between hosted, say, hosted ERP and cloud ERP, and we're talking, you know, many times uh, factors of ten or a hundred in terms of the cost to support those systems from the vendor point of view. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they know what they're talking about, and, and uh, they're also uh, you know, leveraging, beginning to leverage Amazon, um, AWS, Amazon Web Services uh, infrastructure um, as another deployment option. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing some very un interesting things under the cover. They're not getting as much publicity here in the, uh, in the keynotes or in the sessions that I you know, would have liked to have seen, but, uh, they're, but they're doing a good job there. The thing I think that's impressed me is, is that they seem at ease with this, whereas other vendors seem at dis-ease with this, you know? I mean, when we talk to, to SAP, for example, and when we talk to Oracle, I mean, we know Oracle's public position tends to go from one extreme to another. That's SAP, right. SAP has bought its way into this at, at one hell of a cost. Right. And, and yet, on the other side, we have the pure players who say, you're all or nothing. That's right. Yet, on this company's, and it's most importantly, its customers seem very, very at ease with 
with the strategy going forward. That's got to be something that's new and refreshing in the marketplace because we, te we tend to be all or nothing, I think. We tend times. to be all or nothing. And, and the thing with Infor and that I've been promoting you know, in my research is that you really have to take a, pra a pragmatic view. Yeah. Customers are where they are. They're on back levels of certain versions of the software. They have a mix of, of, uh, of different uh, solutions in their data center. Mm. They're looking to deploy cloud, um, you know, either at point solutions or on the hosted you know, ERP or, or uh, various combinations of those if you're multi-site mm. in different geographies. Mm. So the situation is complicated. You can't take an all or nothing right. viewpoint. Right. So the hybrid message does appeal yeah. to uh, customers. Mm. And it's, it's not a compromise, it's just looking at customers in terms of where they are practically. And we don't often hear that, do we, Frank? We, we, do, <laughs> we don't. And then, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about Enforce uh, Everywhere? Is that Why not? Uh, Why not? Yeah. So the other kind of the you know the two the two prongs of the cloud uh, strategy for Infor is mm. one is I've described their you know their business what they're now calling business cloud it used to be Infor 24, and uh, Cloud Suite or something. And now I think it's Cloud Business Cloud or something. But it's the it's the, the solutions of Infor deployed in a cloud computing environment. Right. The other part of that, which I just announced a month or two ago, is this joint venture with, uh, I don't know if it's technically a joint venture, with Salesforce.com called- I understand, Salesforce has got an investment in here. Salesforce has an investment in Infor yeah. to develop, and they've developed this, yeah. a product called Infor's Everywhere, yeah. which takes- um, which is on the force, is it on the force.com platform? It's built on yeah. the force.com platform, and right. on my blog, the Enterprise System Spectator, I have a write-up about this uh, offering, and it's very, very interesting. Right. So for the joint customers, either currently joint customers of Infor and Salesforce, or future customers that they sell together, um, the Infor's Everywhere product mm. allows ERP information from mm. Infor to be visible to uh, Salesforce.com users in Salesforce.com yeah. screens, right? And vice versa. If you're a, an ERP user, you can uh, view uh, sales information out of Salesforce.com in the ERP system. Right. So it gives what we call a 360-degree view of the customer yeah. uh, to the user. Yeah. And we interviewed um, one of the early adopters, uh, Julie Klein, yeah. at. Um, C.H. Briggs. C.H. Briggs, yeah. right, um, which is a, a, a mid-sized distribution company who is uh, one of the first, if not the first, uh, uh, implementations of this system. And she mm. gave a very powerful testimony oh, yeah. Yeah, very about so. what this means for them. So, uh, like you just pointed out, Salesforce actually made an investment in Infor, yeah. which um, was interesting. Yeah. So there's some skin in the game, yeah. and they're doing this uh, joint development, um, you know, both uh, with uh, Infor, uh, developers and Salesforce uh, uh, resources. So, so this is very interesting. Um, you know, Infor didn't have a, a strong point solution for CRM. So mm. Salesforce uh, is a natural kinda, partner in that sense. It's, isn't it's it? a natural. Well, they're not competitors, are they? Is, they're is, not competitors. And um, if you look at it from that standpoint, you know, S S the, the first two large enterprise software vendors, SAP and Oracle, were really not suitable for partnership with Salesforce. Hardly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Infor uh, comes in as really a very yeah, yeah, attractive yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, option for them. Yeah. So. Uh, so those are the two kind of legs of the, uh, of, the yeah. of the of the strategy. I think overall, the last couple of days, uh, with what they've been saying, my view is is that this has become a company that we really need to start paying a lot of attention to. In the past, we might have paid attention once, twice a year, perhaps, occasionally write something in a report or what have you. I think we now need to pay him for a lot more attention. I, th I think so. With with Charles Phillips coming on board with a, a team of people that he's brought in uh, from his past lives. Yeah. Um, he's got a very strong management team here. They've hired a ton of developers. They're doing some very interesting work. And for you know, guys like us that care about, uh, you know, from the customer standpoint, yeah. there is the 70,000 customers and they need uh, new technology. And uh, so it's important what Infor is doing for them. Okay, And, Thank then, and then just one more point. Sure. You know, I think that uh, we talked about the challenge yeah. of uh, Infor faces in selling cloud services. And this is true for all of the uh, uh, established vendors is that you know, the cloud model really requires you to sell mm. um, a subscription service. And from a sales point of view, that's not as attractive as selling an on-premise uh, solution mm. that has a large upfront cash payment to the, uh, to the salesperson. But and, they uh, know that, they know that, and they're, they're they, figuring it out. They, they know that, and uh, in fact, they gave me some hints that in fact, um, they're making some changes to the sales model that mm. should put the um, cloud uh, deployment on an equal footing, or more of an equal footing, with on-premise sales. So if they can get that piece 
right. Yeah. I think that they have a very, um, uh, uh, that that would be the last piece to make this uh, strategy successful. Well, as always, Frank, we need to follow what's going on. We sure do. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Thanks care. for the opportunity. Cheers. Take care.